we didn't really have any expectation it would hit as big as it did. I mean, you know, obviously when you make these things, you, you have a lot of passion and a lot of uh, expectations for it, but you know, the way it took off was way beyond our expectation. Doom was out and Apogee also had their own Rise of the Triad game and just a ton of other 3D games like that. So that's where it was decided to take Duke 3D. Duke Nukem came out right when the uh, industry was transitioning from the sprite-based games, and that would be where everything is actually, even the bad guys, the animated bad guys, were just a flat piece of art. And uh, you know, as, as you moved around them or they moved around, it would just orient itself differently. And the industry was changing then to um, true 3D model with Quake, I think, I don't know if it was the first, but that was the big one coming out. It was decided once we went 3D, you can explode the world a lot larger than it used to be. So the personality and the character and the attitude came through, but even a lot of that wasn't until the end of the game because, as we said earlier, I did the voice of Duke Nukem, I mean, just two words in Duke Nukem 2, and Duke Nukem was mute through the bulk of the development of Duke 3D. He didn't talk until right at the end when it was decided that, hey, you know, most of these characters don't ever say anything, why don't we do one with a voice? I was approached by a casting director in San Diego, where I live, who was in touch with George Broussard. And George wanted a character voice for Duke that would really bring out the, uh, the anger and the, uh, the comedy of this character. Looks like those alien bastards shot up my ride. The very beginning was, like I said, there was two guys downstairs, which was Alan Blum, Todd Rupogel, and another artist. And they were putting it together, but the artwork it was less than the quality they desired. And based on that, that's when uh, George Broussard got together with Todd and Alan and decided that they were going to throw our entire development team, the in-house development team at Apogee and now 3D Realms, at the project. And so it was already underway and our key was to develop it into something that could be really, really good. I wanted to get involved with Duke, so I, I applied at 3D Realms, got a job there, and uh, came down and, and just had a ball working on it with uh, you know one of my other co-founders of Gearbox, uh, Randy Pitchford. I didn't become a professional game maker until the mid-90s. I didn't even imagine that such a thing was possible. It was always a hobby for me. So I looked around and I eventually um, I got some job offers and I, and I accepted a job offer in Texas and I came out to work for a company called 3D Realms and the first game that I got involved with as a professional game maker uh, was Duke Nukem 3D. Duke Nukem 3D was the hit that it was because of the, the for multiple reasons. Again, we got to spend most of our time making it fun. Uh, we play tested the hell out of it. You know, we played every level over and every night we would play test the game. Uh, which is not typical nowadays. That was one of the most fun recording experiences I've ever had doing Duke 3D. Uh, the writing on the game, the lines that I had to deliver were outrageous and funny to me. Um, I would say that the recording sessions took perhaps a little longer than they should have because I had a hard time keeping a straight face reading some of the Duke Nukem lines. I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of gum. We would sit around and somebody would have an idea about, oh, it'd be cool if he said this, or it'd be wonderful if, if he went ahead and shot this Mickey Mouse character, or I shouldn't say Mickey Mouse, a mouse type character at an amusement park, or something like that, and then say, man, that was annoying. Almost all of the really good ideas would start, we'd all like smoke breaks or while we're eating, someone would have a little spark of an idea. And then a second person would add to it, you know, like five minutes later, think, oh, you know what else? And then the third person, and once that third person had added their part, the idea was just like, yeah, we gotta do that. And as I recall, I'm not sure exactly if I'm remembering correctly, but that was how the, we, uh, somebody thought to have the, this lizard monster drop poop every once in a while, and then we all oh, have Duke Nukem, when he steps in it, he'll leave footprints. And then that turned into the footprints that we used quite a bit for stepping in anything. There was a little bit of the Duke personality in Duke 2, because in, in Duke 1 and 2, yes, there were characters. There was Duke Nukem and Dr. Proton and things of that nature. But the character, the essence of what made the character what it is now, 
wasn't so much, it wasn't almost, almost wasn't there at all in the first one. And it was just tidbits of it in the second game. Come get some. How much of Duke is in you? Well, every time I go to the bathroom, I realize that I get about 10 points of health. And I, I always, uh, you know, much better. Oh, yeah. We didn't know precisely what we had with that game. Um, we knew it was good, but there's lots of good games that never take off. And it just took off. George Broussard and Scott Miller, who were you know, the owners of Apogee, a publishing company, and, and, and 3D Realms, a label that, that you know, launched Duke 3D, um, these guys really did a lot to, to help spawn uh, an industry here in Dallas. And, and really created the, the first person genre. The combination of violence, not real violence, no one's really getting hurt, the combination of violence and, and humor to me is just, and the Stooges, and I mean there's a lot of examples of that. I'm not sure why that blend is, is, is so good, but particularly for me, I liked it. So I knew all along that the game was gonna do well, well, I didn't know it was going to do well, but I, I knew we had a hit. It's just really nice to see seeds that are planted grow into what it's become. Um, you can't ever expect that, but when it happens, it's, it's magic. We, were, we had a blast. We just had a really good time with it. The, the question was, what were we going to move on to next? And um, I think, I, in my case, I moved on to another game called Shadow Warrior, which came out shortly after that. But uh, Alan and Todd and a few other people Basically, they were already delving into the next project, which was Duke Nukem Forever. People just want to play stuff. And, you know, we did Duke 3D, and people enjoyed it. And we did the expansion path, and people enjoyed that. And people just want a sequel. They just want to play something. Come get some.